Hello. Today I would like to take you to ancient Greece. But not the Greece of Apollo and Zeus, but to a small island. Picture, if you will, a walled city and a quay full of fishing boats, a fertile plain stretching away from the city and a mountain stretching up into the sky. And within the city, four farmers are in an alehouse discussing the island paradise they live in. The harvest from the sea, the harvest from the land. Even the slopes of the mountain are ripe for sheep and goats. They laugh when they say the goat herds are in the mountains, dreaming of being heroes. But then one changes the time. Ah, he said, but what if something should attack our flocks? At first they scoffed. Nothing like that had ever happened on the island. But then their eyes darkened. What if something came? They put it aside and carried on with their drink. But two days later, a sheep was found torn to pieces. A man walking on the cliffs said he saw a man or a beast walking upright like a man, but not looking like a man. A ripple of apprehension ran through the farming community. Two days later, two cows were found ripped to pieces in a field by the beach. A shepherd said, he had seen a beast ten foot tall walking down the beach towards the sea. The farmers went to the king's bailiff, who listened to them, thinking their stories were exaggerated. But he took it to the council. As they spoke, there was a commotion on the quay. And they looked out from the city wall and there were two fishermen arriving tight-lipped and ashen-faced for they had lost their catch they described a monster coming out of the water grabbing their nets swallowing their catch whole a monster green and scaly with claws and teeth and red eyes A committee of war was convened. The army was to protect the land, the navy by sea. But as they spoke, the monster rose up out of the quay, 20 feet tall. The people working on the quayside ran in a panic inside the city walls and the gates were slammed shut. The king stood on the balcony and looked out. And then the monster spoke. I am Forvos, he said, and I tire of your animals. When the sun has risen twice, I will have one of you. Panic in the streets of the city. One of us? How will it know? How will we choose? The king decreed that everyone on the island's name would go into a barrel and he would pick one out to be sacrificed to the monster. The people in the streets were unconvinced. They spoke of the royal family. It won't be one of them. Their names won't be in it. Nor the councillors, nor the rich. The atmosphere was grim. But the next morning, the scribes having been out across the entire island, the king stood and took a piece of paper out of the barrel. And when he opened it, his shoulders slumped. For it was the name of his daughter, the princess. As the news ran through the city, those who had doubted the royal family felt ashamed. 
They hung their heads, for the princess was popular amongst them. Following day, a huge crowd had gathered along the city walls, along the quayside. The princess, dressed in her finest clothes, had her last breakfast with her family but she was determined to keep her dignity at this terrible time. Tears weren't far from their eyes as they watched her walk out of the chamber, down the stairs, and the gates were opened. The crowd parted as the monster rose from the water and stood green and hideous, red eyes, spiky hair, claws and teeth waiting. But as the princess walked out through the gates, the heads of the crowd turned to the east, for <clears throat> there was a figure, a figure in peasant's clothes wearing a helmet, carrying a shield and a sword. At any other time, people might have laughed and mocked him. But the crowd went silent and watched as he walked purposefully to the quay. He stood in front of the monster and called out, You have struck fear into the people of this island. But I fear you not. You are not welcome here. Take yourself from this place. Silence was almost something you could touch. The water around the monster began to ripple. The air around him shuddered. He became transparent and then in a final moment turned to dust. An offshore wind blew him out to sea. The cheers went up in the crowd. There were tears. The tables were laid out. Food and wine and ale. What they had thought would be a wake had turned into a celebration, a day that would be a festival for years to come. It wasn't until early evening as the sun began to dip over the bay that they realised that their saving night was nowhere to be seen. And in the mountain, outside his cottage, Tharus, the goat herd, sipped a glass of wine. He had put his father's helmet and shield and sword back into the loft of the cottage, and now he just smiled to himself. As time went on, and truth turned to legend, and legend turned to myth, in a hundred years, when there was no one left alive who had witnessed what had taken place that day. The story was that a knight in silver armour had ridden onto the quay and driven off the monster. And the people slept in their beds easy, knowing that if their island was threatened again, he would return. And that's the end of my story for today.